something that's very important to us at JoeCon is to make sure that our lineup definitely reflects the community that supports us. A lot of people, they want to have these conversations. You know, a lot of people like to talk and they like to, ha they have points they want to prove or they just have messages they want to get out and they just don't have a way of really doing it on such a global scale. And so, um, having that diversity, whether it's racial diversity, diversity, diversity in age, just diversity in thought, that's something that was important to us. This is where it all begins, so say goodbye to all your fears, all your doubts, this is where they die. This is where we come to win, we come to fly. This is where we make our dreams come to life. Welcome to Innovation City. Welcome to Innovation City, a podcast featuring the innovators, creators, and disruptors who are changing the way that business happens. My name is Tyler Kelly, and I'm here with my co-host, Miss Leanne Buchanan. Hey, everybody. And today we're coming to you from Slam Agency St. Louis. The HQ, and I'm super excited because tonight, today, we're joined by Mr. J.J. Lewis. Hey. Welcome, my friend. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, J.J., how you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Because we were talking about, this is your first yes. video <laughs> podcast ever. Yes, my very first. Um, and you know what? This is kind of a breakthrough moment for me. You know, this is something that, you know, I'm, I'm real big on my privacy. Um, I think that's a big part of it. And... You know, I've always wanted, well, not wanted to build my brand around myself, just more so my company and my work. So, but this is new. I'm excited about it. So that's actually a great way for us to kick it off. Um, for those that don't know, you are the managing partner and chief creative officer of Joe Khan Media. Yes. And we're going to get into that very deep, but we want to start with the why and the who, which is you. Okay. Uh, so we were kind of chopping it up before and you talked to me about places you've traveled. Right. What is it about travel that has changed your life? Well, travel for me has definitely opened my mind. Um, and my travels actually started here in the United States probably about 20 years ago. Um, you know, I was here in St. Louis and a good friend of mine, he moved to Atlanta, Georgia, and um, I went to go visit him. And I won't say that was my first time traveling because actually I lived in Iowa for a while and I would travel back and forth from St. Louis to Iowa. But going outside of that Midwestern vibe, you know, I went to Atlanta and of course Atlanta being what it is, you know, especially to African-Americans, um, I just kind of caught the bug. And after that, I was all over the place. And I think that, that idea of travel opening your mind and helping you learn more about not only places, but yourself. Right. You yeah. also are a creative. Yes. And you have a role where you are opening people's minds through various mediums. Talk to us about how you fell into that or how you came to be in your current role. Well, you know what? It's funny because um, like most people, I had a regular job at one point. Um, a lot of people don't know this. This is also something new that I'm discussing. <laughs> I was a policeman for a long time. Really? Yeah, I was a police officer here in the city of St. Louis. And even when I did that, um, I've always had that creative spirit in me. But because I was so mired down by all these other responsibilities, I was never really able to, you know, get that out. You know, so. But anyway, I ended up retiring from the police department. Um then I went back to school, got my degrees, got another job with the city of St. Louis, stayed in that position for about maybe four years or so. And um, I just kind of felt like the world was passing me by, you know, so I had to do something about it. So what I did was um, I made a conscious decision after long conversations with family, my daughter and prayer, you know, um, I decided to leave the job. And I didn't have a plan at that time. My plan wasn't being a podcaster, okay? <laughs> but um, so anyway, I left that. And, um, you know, maybe about a month or two after I left, um, it just kind of hit me. You know, I was watching YouTube videos and uh, listening to podcasts. And I just thought to myself, I want to do that. And so, um, you know, I also want to say that podcasting actually isn't my passion. My passion is 
sharing information, sharing resources and things like that. And I thought podcasting was just a great way to do it. And so once I started doing that, then of course that creative side started to really grow and manifest. You also said something that stands out to me is that your creative side started to regrow yes. and manifest. I'm curious um, about where your creativity was when you weren't exercising it. Like how did you, did you kind of let it lay dormant? Was it just kind of suppressed? What was that experience like knowing you had this creative element, but you're you know, right. a law enforcement officer or right. doing something else? Right, no, that's a great question. Um, so I would say probably um, music is, a, is something that I really love. Uh, I love listening to music. I love going to see live bands and things like that. So I would pretty much submerge myself in music some kind of way. Um, and also when I was a police officer, I forgot to mention this, I actually managed a R&B artist here in St. Louis. And um, that kind of, it didn't allow me to really get creative, but I was in a creative setting. So I was able to kind of vibe off of that, you know. But um, so I would say it probably lied dormant for the most part and then you know, with these different moments I had, it kind of flared up a little bit mm -hmm. here and there, but it never went full fledged. Until now. Until now, yeah. You know, a lot of people start a podcast and and that's what it is. It's a podcast. Right. You started a podcast and then you grew a podcast network. And, yes. And how many podcasts are you running now? So right now we actually produce 10 shows. Wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I said the same thing. How'd that come about? <laughs> so what happened with that? So uh, first of all, I got to give a big shout out to my business partner, Faith, because if it wasn't for her, this journey would be a whole lot tougher. But um, so I called her and told her what I wanted to do. And uh, she was a little reluctant about it. She was thinking like podcasting. What? Why do you want to podcast? And so anyway, what we did, we did our research for maybe like eight or nine months and uh, finally learned how to turn up the volume when you're recording. <laughs> Little things like that. It took us a while to figure that stuff out, but we got that going. And so we launched the Platform 314 podcast. That's our flagship show. And so after a while, we just, uh, you know, we recorded our first couple of episodes and we were nervous about putting it out on social media. Um, and at the time, I wasn't on social media, so I didn't know how things really worked. And so what happened, uh, we put it on out there and it did okay, it got a few views, it got some likes and things like that. Um, but I think the moment that told us that we had something special was um, we were at a function. Uh, it was a women's empowerment function we were invited to. And Faith and I were just talking to each other, sitting next to each other. And <clears throat> there was a woman sitting in front of us and she heard us talking and she turned around and she said, are you JJ? <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm JJ. <laughs> and she said, you Faith? And she's like, I listen to your podcast all the time. Wow. And I was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. you know. So that was kind of that moment that made me feel like we have something special. So anyway, that show went well. And then we had a couple people approach us saying that they wanted to podcast. And something that we learned early on is that a lot of people want to podcast, but they don't want to do the technical side of things. So we said, you know what? That might be another avenue for us to explore. And so that's what we did. And so we took on a couple podcasts just kind of on a trial basis and um, we enjoyed it. They enjoyed it. And so next thing you know, it went from the one podcast to three to five to seven to now 10. Yeah. And, and what are some of the challenges? I mean, I mean, would imagine it's kind of like managing an R&B artist is, is yeah. managing podcast talent. Yeah, yeah, definitely it is. Um, I would say um, probably if this is a little easier simply because I'm dealing with people that kind of know what they want to do. They know their niche, you know, like for example, we had uh, Reagan Johnson, Dr. Reagan Johnson. She had a podcast that was about personal professional development and she knew what she wanted to talk about. She had her own list of guests that she wanted to invite. So it's not like we had to put all that together. Mm -hmm. We just basically had to have the space available and, you know, like I said, do the technical side of things, produce it and distribute it. Yeah. So. One of the things I've noticed about your lineup is that the, it's all very community oriented, yeah. local and impactful, you know, in, you. in terms of like city of St. Louis. Yes. Thank you. And that's very intentional, too, um, because something that's very important to us at JoeCon is to make sure that our lineup 
definitely reflects the community that supports us. And so um, having that diversity, whether it's racial diversity, diversity, diversity in age, just diversity in thought, that's something that was important to us. So yeah, I'm glad you identified that. Yeah. Podcasting, I think, is one of many important platforms. Like you said, your real passion is sharing information and having an opportunity for people to learn. So what is something that you've learned through this business of podcasting? Wow, that's a good question. You asked the hard questions. (laughs) (laughs) You tactic. Right. You know, I've learned so much. Are you meaning about just the business itself or just... About yourself, about about life, about anything. Okay, that that helps a lot. So um, I've learned that, one, a lot of people, they want to have these conversations. You know, a lot of people like to talk and... They like to, ha- they have points they want to prove or they just have messages they want to get out and they just don't have a way of really doing it on such a global scale. So I learned that for one. And um, something else is that a lot of people, now podcasting has evolved within the four year- years we've been doing it, but um, there's a lot of people that still don't really know what podcasts are, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and what I mean by that, They don't understand that in its simplest form, a podcast is just a downloadable audio file. That's all it is. You know, but a lot of people you'll see on YouTube, they'll just be sitting at a table doing a YouTube video and they'll call it a podcast, which technically it's not, but it's still all good, you know. But um, so a lot of people, they're not aware of what a podcast is and they don't necessarily know where to find a podcast. And that kind of surprised me, but I always educate people and let them know that you have access to hundreds of thousands, I don't know necessarily how many podcasts right in your phone, Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember when I told my mom what a podcast was and showed her how to find it on her iPhone and she was like, what, Yeah, all of this? And then I showed her Spotify. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) right. But but I think that 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 brings an important issue to light, which is this idea of accessibility of important conversations. I think the time that we're in right now, we're having some very difficult conversations Mm -hmm. about, you know, our national identity, our community identity, the interpersonal bias and relationships that go on. And so I want to understand from your perspective, what, how you process the weight of responsibility of having these platforms and putting these messages out there as a manager. You know what? Uh, Something we are big on is allowing all of our podcasters to kind of do their thing. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, of course, we have um, certain criteria that we live by, um, and that's keeping things as clean as possible, as respectful as possible, um, keeping profanity at a minimum, you know, if possible, and um, just making sure that the content uh, we put out there can... um, will be effective um, and can pretty much be um, consumed anywhere. It can be consumed in a barbershop. It can be consumed in here. It can be consumed, your grandma can consume it or mm-hmm. whoever can consume it. So that's a big part of it for us to make sure that uh, once they realize how accessible it is, that we're putting content out there that is palatable for mostly everyone. Yeah. <clears throat> I haven't listened to any of these episodes that I'm going to mention yet. That's fine. I've noticed, At least you're you, honest, you know, man. I follow you on social. At least social. you're honest. That's, that's good enough. And, and one of the things I've, that I've been saying, okay, I need, to, I need to listen to this, which is faith. What do you call it? Reclaiming the black oh, car? Oh, the black car reclaim. Ooh, yeah, black car reclaim. So good. Yeah, that's one of our best ones this season. And, yeah. when, and just all the old movies that she's watching, yeah. which I'm like, okay, yeah, as a suburban white kid, I was watching those right. movies in the 90s too. So <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm curious to hear what yeah. she says, but what are some of your favorite uh, podcast episodes or, or topics that you've covered? Oh, man, there's so many. I know there's some I've forgotten about. I can tell you there's one particular thing that we did. And this was also one of those moments when I understood the power of podcasting. And uh, this was early on when we probably, I think we had the one podcast. And we did a, uh, a giveaway. J. Cole the Rapper. I don't know if you mm-hmm. guys are familiar with J. Cole the Rapper. <laughs> he was coming in town. Okay. <laughs> and um, he was coming in town. So I just bought some tickets. And I told Faith, we're going to give these tickets away. We're just going to see what kind of response we get, right? And so um, we put everything together. We did a podcast about it, told people what we were doing, and told them about the contest and how they can win the tickets. And so we're thinking that probably someone here local here in St. Louis or nearby will win the tickets and go to the concert. 
but no, actually the person that won was in New York City. Wow. And he mm -hmm. flew here. Wow. Actually, him and his buddy flew here. His buddy came from Chicago. So that had to be probably one of my favorite moments and favorite episodes. Yeah, and then we also talked about the Dubai trip, which we talked about before. That one was pretty good, too. Yeah, there's so many, though. <laughs> yeah. That's an interesting story because we were talking about travel yeah. and and how you've been able to be blessed to travel throughout the world. Yes. But I think the interesting thing about podcasts is there's no geographical boundaries. Right. It's on the internet. Right. It's on the app. Like That's right. you can have, you know, there's a podcast that I listen to that has like a huge listenership in India, yeah. but you know, recorded in LA. So I guess I'm wondering what's your vision for the impact or the reach? of your podcast or the podcast that you're producing? Um, that's a really good question too. You know, right now I would say we have a global reach um, because when we look at the st statistics, we see Africa, uh, parts of Europe, mm. um, even Russia right now. I don't know who's listening in Russia, but they're even listening. So um, I guess, you know, probably just to expand that global reach, mm -hmm. you know, um, and at the same time, we don't want to forget or neglect, you know, keeping our local folks and even just domestically people in tune with what we're doing. But of course, I think anybody that's doing what I'm doing wants that global community. Yeah. You can have friends in every zip code. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Especially after the lightning round. I know, right? Yeah. Right? It's yeah. that time. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> what or who, who are you grateful for? Wow, um, my father. Yeah, he, he's no longer here, but I can tell you my father, the things that he talked to me about, the things that he shared with me, the things that he taught me, the hustle that he gave me, um, I'm living it to this day. And um, so it's him. And you know, I also think about, <clears throat> um, man, if I could just get one more moment with him and talk to him and get some more advice, I would love that. So I would say my father, definitely. What did you learn from your biggest regret? Wow, I can tell you, I don't have many regrets, uh, but there is one, and this might sound a little silly, I don't know, but uh, my father, again, he gave me a $500 bill, and I sold it. And I just said, if I ever get a hold of one ever again, i never do that, I'll never do that again, unless I sell it and it changes my life. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's probably the only regret I have mm -hmm. because of the emotional attachment that I had to it, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. What would you do if you were not afraid? Ooh, uh, what would I do if I was not afraid? Probably move out of St. Louis, Ooh. yeah probably move out of St. Louis. Um, I've been here so long that, um, and because I travel so much, I don't necessarily feel that need to leave St. Louis. But um, yeah, leave St. Louis, start or and take my company elsewhere, whatever it is I do, um, and try to live another life, meet new people, absorb new energy, mm -hmm. um, learn new things, feel new vibes. I would love to do that, but at this age too, it's a, it's a bit fearful. You gotta be a little more strategic, you know? Well, you're never too old to chase a dream. Okay. <laughs> um, but that wasn't the question. What, <laughs> what does this world need more of? Wow, just love. That's it. it. It's not that difficult. It's just love, empathy, sympathy, and understanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What challenge do you want to overcome? What challenge do I want to overcome? Uh, man, that is a good one. Personally or professionally, or does it matter? Does it's it matter? I would say, uh, man, personally, probably my biggest challenge is staying pliable. You know, I always like to feel like I have an open mind and that I'm okay with change. Um, but um, there are times that or uh, things that I experienced that let me know that sometimes I'm not. Mm -hmm. So trying to really overcome that, that uh, you know, that, that reluctance mm -hmm. of just absorbing change, being comfortable with that. What is a defining moment in your life and how did it impact you? Ooh, defining moment in my life. 
I tell you what, um, probably when I became a police officer, that was something totally new for me. Um, that was a time in my life when I learned a lot about myself, um, what I was willing to uh, accept and not accept. Um, and um, I got a different look at my community mm. from a different angle. And so, yeah, that definitely helped define me as an adult. Um, it helped strengthen me in some ways. And um, it helped me, um, it just really kind of toughened me up in some ways. And also just be more empathetic to people and some of the things that they're going through. So I think that helped me as an individual, just as a whole. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, JJ, this has been a fascinating conversation okay. can Thank you believe you. it's our it's already yeah it feels like 10 minutes man <laughs> so but it was great i really appreciate the opportunity so how can people get in touch with you how can they uh connect with the podcast with with joe con how can they find you website social all that good stuff okay uh let me try to remember all this stuff uh so they can find joe con media obviously at joe that's the website um on social media facebook twitter and instagram at joe con media uh, they can find me at j dot j dot the platform three one four on Instagram and um, on Facebook JJ Lewis. Well, thank you so much. This has been a great conversation. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you for listening to Innovation City. If you like this episode, you can find more episodes at innovationcity.co or anywhere where you watch or listen to podcasts. Please subscribe, rate, and review, and we'll see you next week. This is where it all begins, so say goodbye to all your fears, all your doubts, this is where they die, this is where we come